Okay, so there's a um, a new um, movie editing app in the App Store for the iPad, and it probably works best with the iPad too. There's no limitation in which iPad, but from the comments that I've seen, it's called Avid Studio. It's made by the company that's been in the business of movie editing going back decades. I remember they used to have those high cost machines and. Well, they released an, an iPad app that I think gives iMovie and Real Director, which are two other movie editing apps, iMovie being the one from Apple. And it costs the same as Apple's iMovie app. It's uh, $4.99. came out on February 2nd. And it looks pretty cool. Here is what it looks like in the uh, App Store. Um, and it seems to have a lot more editing features than you do in uh, iMovie. So let's take a look at what it looks like. I'm going to go over um, uh, screen recording here. And um, so I started a project. Let's go back to uh, one of the things that it does when often though is it needs to rebuild your media library. So it's similar to iMovie in the sense that there's like two modes. One is a mode where you see all your projects and then the mode when you're in your project. So if I press the home button up here, I created one project called Max Future, and I guess the projects line up here uh, in this film strip. Right now I only have one project, and there's like a little movie film reel on this on the side. So you, you click that, and I started a project, and what's nice about it is, let's see, uh, you can look at your video, and it pulls the video not just from the... Um, the photo app it pulls it from your video app too so like I have like these Stanford iPad and iPhone app um, courses that are in here as videos plus a music video that I had um, and um, what else it's got um, well let, let's just try this video that I just uh, uh, I guess I just recorded and the cool thing is you just well, I put I put some clips here. You just press the garbage thing and it goes away. You just quickly press, press the garbage, and they go away. So I've cleared it. Now I'm just going to drag this video here to the storyboard. So you have this strip above the editing thing. And if you look closely, you got the storyboard here. you got the video clips here. And then you, you can put like multiple tracks of of audio here. So let's see, what is this? This doesn't appear to be anything. So I'm going to take that out. Let's um, let's put, uh, I don't know, let's see what this is. I think this is a screen recording. Uh, I'm going to put it in the timeline there. And now here's an interesting thing. So here I did a screencast, and it's not in the right direction but I can uh, huh I guess you can't rotate the video in this app and that's a that's a problem let's try it again I'm gonna drag this here and uh, I don't think there's a, a rotate method here let's see if I click here properties fit so that's a problem you can't rotate your video um, so I, I did this screen video recording, and I can't really uh, rotate it. So that would have been a nice. I don't know if you can do that in iMovie, but that's one thing that's kind of limited. Um, so I kind of like the interface. You've got easier editing things. You've got this splicing um, splicer. Looks like a razor, like in the old-fashioned way. You, you click video and it splices the video in two. Um, what else you got? You got the settings and the settings are kind of limited. You can fit the video I guess it, it zeroes in and gets even closer and you could go back but again you can't really rotate it which is a, which is a problem. Uh, what else you got up here? You've got uh, I'm not sure what that does. You can do picture in picture, which is pretty cool. You can keep the, uh, you can replace, use the new length 
let's see what picture in picture looks like so you've got now a drop area and if I wanted to I'll get like a picture over here I'm just I've got random pictures and I'm gonna just uh, right there drop the picture in picture is it working it seems to be working so I'm not sure how that works the picture in picture done there there it is um, Huh. I'm not sure how that picture in picture works. Let's erase it. So I get rid of that. Um, okay, in terms of the music, you've got full access to your iTunes library. You can uh, drag the music in there. Let's see, you got playlists. You've got a flat effects, and this is kind of cool. You've got animal effects, background, so it comes with, you don't really have that with iMovie. This one's more like a, a desktop um, a desktop app. Uh, look, you got electronic, you got a dentist drill. Let's see what happens to that. I drop it, and what's nice is you have, it looks like you have three, three, um, three tracks for the audio. So let's take a look at that. See if we can play it. You can hear it. I'll put the volume up. See what that sounds like. You can sort of you can hear the drill there. And all right. So that's kind of cool. You have all these um, effects. I'm gonna put another track. Now look at that. I have two audio effects. You can't really do that with an iMovie. I've got the and I'm going to put a song, too. Let's see what happens. I'm going to go back to um, albums. And let's see. I got a song, Blue Monday. Let's see if it plays this uh, song from the beginning. Huh. It didn't seem to drag it in. Maybe the DRM or something. There we go. Let's see. Yep, it's playing this song. It's playing everything. So that's pretty cool that you can do two tracks. I'm going to delete the track. So it's pretty intuitive. Let's see. Um, and then you got special transitions here. You can go from A to B. Let's see if I can add... Um, I'm going to split this video in two. And let's do a transition. Let's see what happens. I don't know how you do this. There you go. You just drag it. And let's see what happens to the transition. Yeah, so it sort of fades in and out uh, completely. You can also do a, a cross. Oh, I see. You can drag this. You can drag this um, where you want the connection to be in the fade. Let's see if you can move it some more. I guess it just sort of makes it bigger. Let's see what happens. I extended it. And yeah, it sort of fades in and out. Now, I haven't figured out where is the microphone. Oh, let's see if you want to record. So there so there is a decent help menu uh if you if you press question mark here back on the front page. And uh, I looked through it, and I wasn't able to see if there's a way to narrate. Um, narr narr narrate. Narrate. Or narration. Let's see. And no results. And I looked in the contents, and I didn't really see the way to narrate. And that's one advantage iMovie has in Real Director. You can actually put photos and video and then record an audio overlay so the other things in terms of sharing you can share it as a video file you can email it you can um, share it to Facebook and to YouTube and also something you can trans um, you can transfer it to a PC running Avid Studio so when you email it, you've got a choice of high definition, medium definition, or small. 
let's see, for YouTube, um, you got to sign in. And um, let's go back. And for Facebook, well, it takes you to Facebook. Um, so there's different ways to share, which is pretty good. Let's go back. Um, so look, I think some of the features are definitely better than iMovie. Like the fact that you have three audio tracks, that's kind of huge. And the ability to sort of slice any video using using the um, using the blade, that's kind of cool. Um, one thing I don't like is you can't really... How do you rotate the video? That seems to be a problem. Um, what else do you got here? You've got uh, montage effects. You've got multi. Let's see. They've you've got a lot here. You've got aerodynamics, extreme, multi-layer mix. It's an instant. So you've got like these ta templates that allow you to, um, I guess do some cool editing to begin with and then you got fonts and you got lots of fonts so the fonts are definitely much more than iMovie so most of the stuff is better than iMovie you've got lots of fonts let's try these fancy fonts let's see what happens if I put them right there and my text I'm gonna put max future max future done and um, so that's kind of cool um, and then you can put you can position your text pretty much anywhere uh, let's see if I'm gonna move that over here oh I guess it doesn't overlay let's see if we can do an overlay let's see if I drag this and I put it over oh I see you can't see it until you render so I'm gonna put my text here and I'm gonna put max future in a different form max future done and then how are we gonna render let's see let's go back um, how do you render let's see Oh, here we go. You just press the the gear sign there, and it's uh, rendering the um, the montage and titles. So let's just um, take a breather. Okay, so rendering a couple of titles and mon montages took a, quite a long time. So maybe the reason Apple didn't make iMovie as complicated as um, as as Avid did was because maybe Apple knew that they just, you know that these iPads just don't have the horsepower for a lot of rendering that you need in a video, particularly when you're rendering titles onto um, you know onto various parts. So look overall, I mean I think it's pretty cool. Like you've got video, uh, photos, music transitions aerodynamics and in the music you got all these special effects there's a whole bunch of them and you've got these montages that are pretty cool for like you know having these formats and plus the um the fonts are very involved but again this is it takes a long time to render i'm just goofing around with some clips here the storyboard's kind of cool because you can just put the clips in a nice easy straight sort of tile like view and then connect them um so anyways listen if you're into editing uh movies on your ipad it's only five dollars i'd get this I'd, I'd play with this i'd play with iMovie which is five dollars and i'd play with real director and i would see which you like best each has their strength and each has their limitation I, what I like about Avid is that you have a lot of tools. You've got like lots of different fonts to use and putting in titles and stuff like that in there is going to be much more involved than iMovie and you're going to have all sorts of sound effects 
and you can put three audio tracks, but like missing from this appears to be the ability to record your own narration. And you can do that in Real Director and you can do that in iMovie. So I would recommend it. I think it's a, it's going to put pressure on Apple to create a better iMovie. And the next upgrade of iMovie will probably be uh, competitive with uh, Avid, particularly on the iPad 3. I would not get this if you have just the first generation iPad. I don't think it's going to have enough horsepower for it to, be, to work well. At the very least, you need the iPad 2 and probably the iPad 3.